let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. As we gather together on this fifth Sunday of Lent, in these very difficult and trying times, we place ourselves at God's mercy once again and ask for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord, I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the death I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice and my supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With, With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. 
If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection of the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what had been done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
during these difficult days as the whole world is struggling with this coronavirus. Um, we've been asked to do many things that are strange to us and that are not so easily done by us. The social isolation, the stay at home, don't go into work, don't shake hands, so many things that we're used to doing. I know for myself, I miss my hugs <laughs> from everyone. Um, but we all see the need to cooperate with the plan to try to contain the virus, to try to keep it from spreading so much. And we saw what happened when people don't cooperate. Uh, more rules and regulations have come down with the closing of the beaches and the parks and so forth because people were not cooperating. In our gospel story today, it seems to me there's also a story of cooperation. God, through Jesus, was able to do this incredible miracle, but only through the cooperation of others. Three times, Jesus gives a command to people, and they had to cooperate for this miracle to happen. His first command was to tell the people to move the stone away from the tomb. And they rolled away the stone. They didn't want to. They saw no hope in that situation. And they could only imagine the stink of death and decay. And so, church, we ask ourselves, when God commands us, to act in order for a miracle to happen, do we obey? When the stone of a lack of belief in myself keeps me trapped in a tomb of despair or hopelessness, when a rock of fear keeps me locked up in a job that I can't stand, a relationship that is abusive, an addiction I just can't get beyond, or when the boulder of a virus or other illness that we face, that we might face, keeps me from rejoicing in the gift of another day of life. In those situations when God commands us to roll away the stone, do we? Or do we choose to remain entrapped by our fears, unable to do something different because we don't know what stink might be exposed, what limits or weaknesses might be revealed. But God commands us to roll those stones away, to let in the fresh air of his love, and miracles will happen if we cooperate with God's miracle making. The second command Jesus gives is to Lazarus in the tomb. He shouts, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. Lazarus obeyed the command and gropes his way out of the dark tomb, even with his hands and feet tied up in bandages and his face all wrapped up. He obeyed. When God commands us to come out, do we obey? When we are laying in the darkness of grief after the death of a loved one and cannot see a way forward, when we're stumbling in the dark, not knowing where we are because we can't even see where we've been, when we bump into the walls of the opinion of others, keeping us from doing what we know is right and being who we are meant to be, when God commands us in those situations to come out of the tomb, do we obey? Or do we stay in the darkness waiting for a miracle to happen instead of cooperating 
with God's plan for it to happen. Third command Jesus gives is to the people around there. Untie him and let him go. Even though Lazarus could stumble out of the tomb, there was no way he could unbind himself. He needs the community around him to do that for him. When God commands us to untie someone else, do we obey? When we keep that a family member we had a falling out with 20 years ago wrapped up in the past refusing to speak to her or even acknowledge her when I keep my own child tied up with unrealistic expectations for him to follow my plan for his life or when I keep you bound up in the cloth of failure because you let me down once before and I can't deal with you again and yet God commands us to untie others sometimes we're the one person or we're the community that someone else needs so that a miracle of reconciliation or a miracle of new life can happen church are we ready to cooperate with God for a miracle are we ready to roll away the stone that stands between us and the light of Christ's face? Are we ready to take the first step to come out of the place of death? Are we ready to unbind and forgive others and let them go free? Miracles are waiting for us all. Question we ask ourselves today are we ready to receive those miracles by cooperating with God's way of making miracles? Let us profess our faith in the God who is our miracle maker. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third, the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is glorified and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life the world to come. Amen. Confident in our miracle-making God, we dare to present our petitions to God this morning. <coughs> our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For Pope Francis, Cardinal Sopich, and all leaders of the church, that they may be blessed and strengthened in the zealous way they are ministering to the flocks and trusted to their care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the leaders in healthcare and governance, that God may guide them to make the right decisions of the well-being of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our physicians, nurses, research scientists, and all healthcare workers, and for all who support them in their mission, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For families during these stressful days, that God will seal all homes with his protection and generous love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick, especially those who are placed in quarantine and isolation, that God's healing touch may bring them comfort and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick of our parish community and communities and families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, that they may know the forgiveness of their sins and the gift of everlasting life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those special needs in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we praise and thank you that you always hear us whenever we cry out to you in our need. And so we lift up these petitions this morning in confidence, trusting in your wisdom and your compassion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. May the Lord, Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teaching of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let's lift up our hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. And let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and, and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as a true human being, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God, raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, 
he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all those who lead and serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. We pray again for the gift of your peace, Lord. Give us peace in our hearts, in our homes. Give us peace in our world wrapped with fear and suffering. Give us peace on our streets where there's so much senseless violence, even in the midst of this crisis. Lord, we need the gift of peace, the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Is there any announcements from our pastor? No, no. Just remember, we're praying for you every day, and we ask for your prayers as well during this crisis time. Uh, God bless you all. All right. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And, and with you. your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let's be at peace. Thank Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Be safe.